I used to think that what I was doing was right, okay, um, because of the quality of the thoughts or experiences, whatever, that culminated in me coming up with certain ideas and then putting them into practice was really the only source of that was from within me. Because I couldn't really look externally for positive responses to that directly. I could look for some kind of resonance in looking at what was happening on YouTube or TED Talks or um, things in different fields, you know, what was happening in business or when I'm talking to people or stuff that I'd seen on television or films and just going, oh yeah, yeah. You know, when you see these kind of idealistic things or heroes or something, you go, oh yeah, yeah. I'm doing a similar thing there. Um, and I thought that I could do this alone. Okay. And I was doing that alone and for many years. You know, I wrote a book, and I was teaching, and I was putting the ideas into practice, and I thought I was doing it alone. I wasn't doing it alone. Now I'm doing it alone. <laughs> and now I'm feeling like <laughs> crap. Um, because I realized. That the majority of reason, for example, that's motivated me to do what it is that I'm doing, taking the risk that I have, is because of the love that I got from my parents. I think I had a very good childhood upbringing. And because of that, I can risk more uh, because of the love that was given to me, the trust and faith, unconditionally. And because of that, that very strong, deep root, I thought, well, I'll try and do more for you know, fellow human beings on the planet that haven't had the, the wealth, the privilege, the uh, care and attention that I've had, uh, and the space, the space to be able to grow. Um, that's one major source, right? Um, but in terms of my ideas and so on and so forth, the only uh, feedback I've had, okay, kind of in a direct way, but not really consciously, is from kids, because it works. So I do stuff with a bunch of kids, and I am conscious, and I am explaining what's going on, and it works. And then the kids get into positive states, and it works. And, you know, great. And that's why I had the confidence to meet a bunch of adults last year, last summer, and say the things I said. Because although I couldn't quite, still couldn't quite work out what the adults were doing, I knew that I was onto something positive, because the kids were responding really well. However... Um, that's been taken away from me now because for whatever reason the words that I've used in school the systems that I've tried to put into place and just haven't worked okay and the kids that kind of respond to it are kind of positive about it haven't been allowed for that to grow and the negativity of the people has been overpowering and you know the positions, the roles or whatever also just individually one on one I've said things to people that have not been particularly pleasant. Just try and indicate to people that are not doing particularly pleasant things that, well, that doesn't really help. And reflect back to them, kind of like, not nice things, but not obviously, not like, you know, somebody's rude to me, so I'm rude back to them. It's more like, they've got this attitude, and so it's like, right, how do I demonstrate and express this and the consequences of this attitude on a larger level with other people and so on and so forth. And because I do that, um, well, problems occur. Anyway, so the main kind of feedback loops I've had, being with kids, and that's been taken away from me now, uh, or it's died away. So now I don't have that feedback loop. And so that means I've just got some silly little ideas from the past. That's what I have. I don't have anything functioning now. I don't have anything genuine. And even with the kids, they weren't really doing it consciously in terms of the ideas. They were doing something that experientially worked, and that's why they were doing it. But they didn't actually kind of get the theory. Of course they didn't get the theory, because I was sitting there working out as I was going along. But I kind of expect some adults maybe to get it, which is why I wrote that thing a couple of years ago. But no adults have been interested enough to find out yet. So, in terms of conscious feedback to my ideas, I'm still completely alone. Not still. Now I'm completely alone. I can now justify justifiably say I'm completely alone. I have got nobody with me. Nobody. 
and I don't even have indirect um, feedback uh, from my experiences with people that are positive. Okay, I've got one or two people that kind of like me or something or other, like what I'm saying or something like that, which is very nice. And I probably shouldn't ignore them. But in terms of actually trying to induce some kind of change in the world, no, no, no. Because these individuals are not doing or learning what it is that for me and sort of replicating it anywhere else. They're just kind of like, it's something to do with my personality and they're kind of linking it to me as a personality. Which means that effectively I'm alone. Alone. I'm going to finish this job completely alone. Alone. And for... I don't know why would anybody do this? I have no idea. Uh, okay, so for example, when I was doing tango, okay, this guy showed me how to do it. After the third time he showed me, I didn't get it the first time, but the third time I, I, I think I got it. I think I understood it and I experienced it. And then after that, for a whole year, I just had fun. I just had fun. Okay. And the people that I indirectly had feedback with was women. Women would give me the feedback of whether it was right or wrong, because it was fun. It was enjoyable, it was interesting, it was sensitive, it was sensual. And that's how I learned from a woman. Okay, which for most people get kind of like think it's quite weird or surprising, but it's true. And the same with teaching. The only reason that it's worked is because I got feedback from the kids. Now I never said, right, this is the theory, this is what tango is, and so on and so forth. No, I just kind of like did it and then kind of seduced them into it, and they, they did the tango. Or with the kids, they kind of just did stuff, but it seemed to work, so they just kind of did it. Um, and that's how I learned stuff. Now, if I'm in a situation now, right, and I've done this with tango, where I feel as if I can't make a fucking move because I'm putting it wrong, and some women make me feel like that. But even if women are wanting to dance with me, sometimes, for whatever reason, it's not the right time, space, and so on, so the confidence level has got them as well. Just like, uh, it's just not feeling right. And it doesn't work out. Whatever you kind of step to trying to do, it's a bit of a bore, it's a disaster, it doesn't really work, and it's not smooth, and it's ugly, and so on and so forth. And of course, you know, people say, oh, it's a nice tango, but it wasn't really, it was just kind of like moving about. And it's kind of going through the motions, kind of like that. And I think that's what's happened to me with education. I think I'm just getting to the point where actually I'm just going through the motions, because I have no idea. And I don't think I can. And people are, you know, oh, you should try to do this, I'm enthusiastic. No, no, once you're in this kind of thing, it's just like, it's just, it's just, no, I have no idea, no, no idea, no idea. Well, why don't you do this, try this? Well, I, if somebody was suggesting for me to do something, I went, oh no, that's just going to make it worse. I'm fairly certain, it sounds like a good idea, but what's going to happen is going to backfire again, and then it's going to make the situation worse. And then, well, no, I don't think it will. And I go, okay, <laughs> what, do you, what do you want me to do? And if I do it, and it's something to do with the detention and then pulling them into detention, and then calling their parents, and then saying to their parents, I'm allowed to do this because in 1998 or something or other, you know, it says in the legislature that I can do this. And if a parent's kind of complaining at me, and I'm going to throw some legislation back at them, because of the way I talk, it's just not going to work out. And I think the parent's going to come in, and, uh, and then I'm going to be ending up talking with the head, with the parent, you know, and being told off, <laughs> or something, something silly, okay? So... <laughs> Uh, so I said, no, I, I don't think it's a good idea. It's like suggesting a move that I should do in tango. I'm like, no. Oh, yeah, do the spin. They'll love the spin. It's like, no, we're going to fall on our faces. Uh, the way I'm, you need confidence, you need something or other, and I don't have it yet now. So please, don't don't suggest I do this kind of like tricky move. So I think what I have to do is just bow and remove myself gracefully. Not cause people hassle. Not try. Remove myself respectfully. And that's maybe what all these, and I'd be ranting for God knows negatively, I think that's what I'm going to do. Remove myself respectfully. Now I've resigned, I'm going to try and do this as gently as I can. Okay, and although I've got Portuguese blood and I do get animated and excited and it's like, no, no, just calm down. Okay, just deal with it calmly. Just remove myself calmly and quietly and not cause a huge fuss. If I have caused any fuss or if I continue to, please, I do apologise. It's just qualities of me being in the situation which is very challenging. So, 